My uh, big brother, he is Bruce Piaseki from the from New York. Uh, Bruce, you want to take a seat? Sure. Uh, both uh, these people bring, I would say, uh, close to 70 years of experience, combined experience in working with multinationals. Yeah. So, uh, uh, an organization in uh, in the United States uh, that has also an impact in Europe. Uh, put forward a new proposition for the purpose of businesses and uh, it was an article in, uh, in a newspaper and I said why don't you two guys talk about what is the future of corporation, what's the purpose, the new purpose of the corporation based on what we've been hearing today, you know. What I want to do is uh, in a minute is have you clap for Michael Spanos because he's gotten these 12 substantial speakers in front of you today and the purpose of this few comments that I have is about helping you visualize a way to redefine the purpose of a corporation um, but Michael's doing it and I think uh, we want to thank him for that. So when, when I started writing about business and society um, I visualized um, a corporation as a mansion uh, I had grown up poor next to a factory and a railroad track and so I would look at these various mansions by the beach and imagine what it would be like to get inside of it. And I think nowadays um, as equity has increased for more people, we live in an equity culture. It's not equal, it doesn't offer equity to all, but many of us own stock. And so what I'd like you to do is in thinking about the purpose of those mansions and thinking about the reason you want to get inside those mansions or thrive near them is that they are the source of wealth, invention, and good health. Um, it, it's inevitable because the state governments and federal governments and uh, hospitals and other places cannot do it on their own. So the first image I want you to imagine is a mansion with a beautiful stairwell going up two or three stories in it. And as an individual, ask yourself, what is the equipment that you need to be able to even get in the front door? And I think Michael Spanos embodies a lot of these attributes, and that's why I've been to many headquarters with him over the years. So I want you to visualize this for yourself. I think it takes first a gracefulness. If, if you're coming to the front door with weapons of partial destruction, um, they will uh, maybe choose to lock the door as opposed to welcome you in. So grace is a type of human attribute that is at the very essence of an exchange. When we shake hands, um, when I embrace you or you embrace me, it is an act of grace. At least that's what my mother taught me. But I think it also, once you're in the front door, it takes force to get up the stairs. Um, corporations are very structured. Uh, the, the people who earn their keep are either people who are going to keep you down the stairwell so that you don't annoy the precious time and decision making of the people high up in the mansion. Uh, and so I would like you to think about in your experiences how Michael and in the future has the F Michaels of the future, they have both grace and force and fascination. Now fascination is a poor boy like me getting inside the mansion and just being astonished at the true finer things inside the mansion. The, the condition of law, the state of the technology, how money is made and shared and so forth. Now fascination means that Michael can invite all these 12 speakers. He can have the Euro Development Bank, right? He could have Matt come from the $3 billion trillion, right? He can have the conference board, which might be thought if he didn't have fascination as a potential competitor, right? He could have GRI, right? He can bring with fascination to you. So I would argue that the modern corporation is semi-osmotic. It is like a cell. It is a cell and a mansion. The difference between a mansion is that you can make big mistakes and just use the best lawyers to repair it. But if you begin to realize that this is a living mansion, that it's actually osmotic and information flows into it, 
from stakeholders and it flows out of it. And that we can see it and we could get into it with less and less effort, right? You just, any corporation you want to penetrate, all you have to do is go and listen to their last quarterly disclosure. I suggest you go, for example, to our client Merck. You can see their CEO talk about 88 slides in which you can look deeply up the stairwell of that mansion. You can learn with, with ordinary knowledge how they make their money in oncology or animal health or specialty uh, medicines for superbugs and so forth. My point being is that uh, the modern corporation today competes on price, quality, human talent, ESG metrics, and social needs. And that's why I think it's significant for you to think of this mansion that you're either working in or working beside or supplying as in a neighborhood because there are so many social needs. We learned, for example, from Brian Kellogg today that one of the great social needs of the near future is mobility, right? Not only mobility that's uh, connected cars, but the mobility of people as we lose mobility as we age. I think some of the other aspects of a social need in this uh, robust new age of large corporations and small innovators is that uh, a social purpose is education. And in my experience as a person who's been privileged because I played basketball pretty well to be invited to some of the best schools around, I think that corporations today are great forces of education. I grew up in a pretty rotten neighborhood and still the society gave me so many benefits that it allowed me to climb several mansions. So I think that the problem I've always had with this argument that corporations are purposeless or that they are selfish only is that in my experience when I get into them there is a long need for them to want to provide cleaner air or cleaner water or more food production in arable lands even though they have an incomplete record and a record of devastation at times. I think that our jobs in the future is to knock on that front door get into it and make sure that all major firms realize that they're not only within themselves, but that their massive staffs uh, have a service to the neighborhood. Well, I think that the, the signature of these more than 130 CEOs from the Business Roundtable, they were talking about uh, providing well-being in society. They were providing uh, full and fair wages. They were talking about the need to have a social purpose. What will remain the test of time is that how do we account for that? How do we demand as we knock on the front door? But I think the fact that the Business Roundtable is doing this is quite astonishing. Uh, as we enter a world in which we're both carbon and capital constrained, this organization of CEOs which used to simply lobby for status and lobby for the status quo is beginning to recognize the things you're all interested in. So that's a very good sign. Yeah. It's just the beginning. They have very far to go. Uh, another question says, uh, in times of crisis, we've seen a lot of solidarity by people and organizations at the bottom of the pyramid, but proportionally less from major corporations. Why should this change now? Well, I think we have a lot to learn from this one from someone who runs a CEO club, because I think when you look at uh, the four or five times I've been enabled to see the CEO club of Greece or the CEO club in um, Boston or Texas, what you get a feeling of is um, companies that are sharing best practices and companies that are sharing the habits of leadership that move us towards social response capitalism rather than speculative capitalism.